no, no, no. This is not how this franchise is gonna end. This is not going to be the end with you fading off into the darkness and me having to deal with your mess afterwards. Get back up here and clean up this cluster f of a mess that you call lore and do it neatly because I, I just can't do it anymore. I just, I just can't do it anymore. Why? Why, Scott? Why have you forsaken me? Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of that Cyber Channel. I'm Dan Cyber and it's time for... Dan plays a ton of FNAF games and loses his mind a third time. Yep, that's right, we're sorting through this mountain of games to find the best ones worth talking about. Or rather you guys yell at me in the comments because I missed some of my other two videos. Which if you haven't watched those parts yet, boom, there's the iCard with the link to those videos. Normally I reserve this spot for talking about the history of the franchise, but I think that's been thoroughly covered by myself and every other YouTuber. Instead I'd like to take some time addressing some comments from the previous videos. <clears throat> Yes, I know I missed a few games. There are way too many fan games to choose from, so if I miss something, I'm sorry. But we're talking about thousands of games. There's a lot to cover, and in case I miss your favorite, please have mercy. Secondly, I know I look like Jack Black, painfully aware at this point. Now tweet at Jack Black so we can collab. We'll cover Brutal Legend. Hashtag Jack Black Cross Cyber. Also, I've had a chance to talk to a few developers of these fan games, and I gotta say, I have much more respect for them than I already had. So to you developers watching, thank you for making these games. And I'm sorry I accidentally spoiled the final boss of your game. I'm so sorry, Catherine. So for this video, we're going to be putting each game into one of three categories. Extended Universe, which are games that build on the story and world of FNAF. Fan Fan Games, which take your favorite franchises and shove it into a FNAF format like 50 characters into one game. Then finally, we have the Oddities. The games that change up the gameplay or story so drastically you just kind of go, uh, what? Let's kick this off in the Extended Universe with a game that almost literally scared the crap out of me. Pork Chops Adventure. Honestly, I thought this was going to be a fairly tame game with a bright and colorful platform adventure. Instead, it just preys on my fear of the dark and having to walk in pure darkness. If you've ever had the power go off on you while in the shower with no windows, you know that feeling. Demons! Demons! <laughs> Porkchop's adventure puts you in the shoes of a studio employee who happens to get stuck on the top floor when the elevator breaks and the stair door is broken. Which, how does that even happen? That's like 15 fire code violations. That studio would be shut down. This game is played in two parts, the Porkchop's adventure platformer and a point and click adventure. Playing the platformer is the tame way to play as you'll simply need to check over your shoulder every now and then to stop Porkchop which is now my new fear whenever I play games. The second part has you leaving the break room to explore the studio. Around the studio, you'll find various puzzles and mysteries to solve. This is how you unlock the many different endings in this game. By solving the puzzles and beating Porkchop's adventure, you can uncover the dark secrets of the studio. Personally, I sat in the room and played the game. It's safer, but I have no idea why you would just leave the door open like that. I would have blocked the crap out of that door, but this is a horror game and apparently no common sense exists here. Overall, I really enjoyed this game and would love to dive further into it, but I had too many games to go through, so let's move on. Next up is the game you guys recommended basically non-stop from the previous videos, and when I played it, I 100% understand why. Dormitabus, and I'm sure I said that wrong, is next, and it's easily one of the best on this list. Taking place in Purgatory, you play as Purple Guy who must protect himself from his own creations that are trying to get his plasma which makes about as much sense as anything else in this franchise. This game is absolutely terrifying. Not only is the environment twisted and demented, but the animatronics are straight out of the darkest hell imaginable. They're some of the most bone-chilling animatronics I've seen playing these games. Gameplay is also really solid, though it does highlight one thing I dislike about most of these FNAF-style games. Tutorials that just word vomit. After each night, you can head into the tutorial menu to see how to protect yourself from each new animatronic. I would like to say this is only if you're having trouble, but most of the time it is essential to surviving the night. Most of the time, Phone Guy just doesn't cover it at all. Where this game really shines though is through sound design. 
My favorite part about FNAF 4 was how sound played a bigger role in helping you defend against nightmares. And Dormitavis, still not saying it right, sound cues again help you quickly identify the threat and prevent the jump scare. Personally, I think it's a crucial part of making a good FNAF game, and it helps jump scares feel more deserved rather than random RNG BS to scare you. And while I have qualms with the camera system too, it's a very small complaint. This game overall is a great example of what makes a good FNAF style game. The next franchise I wanted to cover was Final Nights, but since the developer took down the first game to be reworked, I jumped into Final Nights 2 Father's Sin. First thing I want to say about it is that I love the presentation of this game. The graphics are great and yet maintain that sort of low budget feel from the main FNAF franchise. Just everything about it has a great feel from menu to office. Speaking of office, this might be my favorite out of all of the games. Beautifully designed and simple to navigate, defending against the animatronics felt engaging and fluid. Sort of. In the office, you use WSAD to turn to defend. So when you hit W to go to left, you naturally want to hit D to go back to center. Instead, you have to hit W again, which is kind of weird, but you can adjust quickly. Gameplay is for the most part simple enough to grasp. Closing the vents and shining flashlights will be your main defenses. Not to mention that for the most part, you have plenty of time to make sure that you can take care of each threat. For the most part. Foxy took me a bit of a while to grasp on how he works. I was closing the door to stop him, but it took some trial and error to figure out when he actually left. Fortunately, sound cues again play a huge part in this game. Each animatronic has some sort of sound cue to let you know when they're closing in. There's only one small little problem I have with this game. <laughs> Bonnie is some straight BS! While he gets into the vents rather fast, you must have perfect timing to prevent his jump scare. Where Freddy's timing in the vent is pretty simple, Bonnie requires you to close the vent right before he jump scares you. It takes a lot of time to watch, and you have way too many other things to handle. It just feels like if you're gonna come at me, then come at me, Bonnie! <laughs> Overall, I enjoyed this game, just some slight balancing issues that threw me off. The last extended universe game I would like to talk about is Bubba's Diner. Bubba's Diner puts you in the shoes of the night handyman as you must perform certain tasks each night for the day crew. It has a similar feel to the night section of FNAF 6, plus a little more. Each night you will have to perform more and more tasks, with night one simply being print off some flyers with the loudest printer I have ever heard. That was for a select few of you, bonus points if you knew that reference. Of course, it wouldn't be a FNAF style game if you weren't under constant threat of jump scares. So while printing, you'll have to make sure that Bubba and Pork Patch don't enter your office. The next nights will add in some more tasks, like repairing Mr. Giggles, fix the breaker in the basement, and plunge the toilet to the most appropriate song ever. What I really like about this game is how you actually move through the restaurant to get to each task. It adds a level of uneasiness since you just saw them actively roaming around the place in the office game. Overall, I thought this game felt fairly easy to defend against jump scares, though the Mr. Giggles part was a bit rougher since it wasn't entirely clear when it was okay to use the voice commands. Personally, I give it a 7 out of 10. Next up is Fan Fan Games. You know, those games that awkwardly take your favorite franchises and shove it into an awkward FNAF style game. Kind of like insisting that Cheerios is better with melted butter on it. That's so gross. It is not, it is delicious, and the Cheerios cancel out the artery clogging effect of the butter! So I'm actually kind of ashamed that this wasn't one of the first games I talked about. It's almost criminal that I didn't. Well, for some of you it actually was, but that is not the point. Five Nights at Treasure Island was one of the first, if not the first FNAF fan game ever made. It was definitely one of the first to find its way onto YouTube. This game has you play as the security guard of Disney's abandoned attraction, Treasure Island. Based off a creepypasta called Abandoned by Disney, this game has you defending against twisted versions of Disney's classic characters. At first, I didn't think it was that scary. The main enemy being photo negative Mickey, which isn't that spooky really. I mean, all the enemies just kind of felt a little tank. Burn it with fire! Oh. oh crap, the video! As far as gameplay is concerned, it's pretty straightforward. If a character gets into your office, simply turn off the camera, which are kind of pointless anyway, to get them to leave. 
Apparently, the sound of turning off a camera distracts them? I'm not sure. Hold on, let's test this. Huh, well, I'll be damned. Oh, got it, kid. Overall, this game is pretty good. Simple enough to handle, but definitely worth checking out since it was the first of way too many games. Next up is Five Nights at Pinkies, which again, another game y'all suggested, and I don't know why. Five Nights at Pinkies is FNAF 1, but with ponies. You have Twilight Sparkle as Bonnie, Fluttershy as Chica, Pinky as Freddy, and Applejack as Foxy. Yeah, I know who they are. Yeah, I watched the My Little Pony movie. I was forced to, and Time to Be Awesome is a great song, and I don't care what you think. From there, it's all the standard practices from the first game but with ponies. Shut the doors to stop them from entering your office and blah, blah, blah. Look, there is nothing inherently wrong with this game. If you liked FNAF 1 and think it would be better with ponies, you'll dig this game. Plus the AI is just a bit more aggressive, which makes for a more engaging night one. The next game is what happens when you slam two of the most vocal fan bases together into one game. That's right, Five Nights at Undertale. Undertale is easily one of my favorite games to come out in recent history, and I use the soundtrack quite a bit in my videos. Five Nights at Undertale, well, it's decent. The game starts with one small, tiny little problem. A freaking novel as Alfie's explains how to play the game. Since there is no voice acting in Undertale, you instead get a huge brick of text to explain each night. It's fun since it's in character, but my god is it a lot to sort through. Once you're in the night, it's pretty straightforward. Use the cameras to keep track of Papyrus and Undyne to prevent them from attacking you. Flowey eventually joins in too, but honestly this game is pretty tough to get through. Not only are the nights long, but the power you start with just doesn't feel enough to handle everything. You rely on the camera pretty heavily and that drains power, but if you don't use it, you can't figure out when you need to defend and from where. If the camera took less power, this would do wonders for the game. Overall, this game is alright, but if you like Undertale, you may enjoy this a bit more than others. This next game... <laughs> oh, this next game. I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. This game goes from fairly straightforward to 90 light years per a second. The last game of the fan fan games is Five Nights with Mac Tonight. Based on an obscure mascot from McDonald's, Mac Tonight starts rather simple. Defend against Mac by closing a window or making noise in the kitchen. Pretty straightforward. Though I gotta say, the model for Mac looks like someone stretched out melted string cheese. Night 2 only adds one more animatronic, the Hamburglar, who attacks from the vent. Still, not too much more difficult. Then, then, night three hits, and holy hot hell, what is going on? Night three seemingly only activates Grimace, or so the phone guy says. Turns out, three or more other characters appear. Like, what? Like, what even? First, this shadow Ronald McDonald appears at the piano, followed by an actual demented Ronald McDonald that looks like he had a botched facelift. Then suddenly there's this dude with a hat, which I think is their early mascot, but he appears for a hot second and then it's just gone. Then Bendy? Is that freaking Bendy just grabbing a Big Mac before he goes off to ink up some poor bastard? Like, what is this game even? This game is a hot mess and I love it. I would 100% recommend this game just for Night 3 alone. And with that, we move into the final set of games, the oddities. These are the games that take a hard turn on either the gameplay or story. AKA, these are the games that don't jump scare me and I have a much better time playing. Don't judge me. Starting us off is Scott in Space, which as a big fan of space and not getting jump scared, I was super pumped for this game. Scott in Space is a celebration of FNAF's four year anniversary. And how did they do it? With a Flappy Bird clone, of course. Wait, what? Scott in Space is on its surface, just a Flappy Bird clone. But dig a little deeper and there's a few other things happening here. While playing the Flappy Bird part, you can find floating objects in the background. Some of these can be clicked on, which leads to this. You're then tossed into a brand new part of the game with different mechanics. Granted, nothing is too complicated or hard, but the game does become a fun collection of minigames. From collecting falling exotic butters, to hiding from a giant bonnie head, to running around in a Pac-Man maze full of animatronics kinda hunting you. They more just kinda bounce around and hope to hit you. But at the end of it all, it's just a fun adventure and a solid use of an hour if you got it. Next up is a follow-up to one of my favorite fan games I've played, Bonnie Simulator, and I gotta say, this easily tops that. 
Chica Simulator is just a damn good time. Normally I try to avoid covering sequels or else these videos would be five times as long covering full franchises. But Chica Simulator is just such an improvement over the original game that I had to talk about it. Chica Simulator has you playing as all various versions of Chica as you try to take out the security guard. You'll play as FNAF 1 Chica, Phantom Chica, and even Rockstar Chica to name a few. Gameplay is even different from version to version of Chica, most of them involving waiting for a timer to go down to move towards your victim, but each has various different challenges along the way. Some are kind of BS like Nightmare Chica that being spotted sends you all the way to the beginning no matter where you are in the process, but others like Funtime Chica is just some nonsensical fun as you spam. Don't get distracted, don't get distracted. There was also a shop to unlock each Chica, items that you could use to make your game easier or harder, and other fun mini games you can play. It is a bit of a grind to gather all the points though, so I may or may not have cheated. Hey, don't judge me, I had to play like 15 of these games in four days, and I just wanted the full Chica experience. At the end of the day though, this is a great game to play if you need a break from the stress of the other games. This next game was easily the second most requested game to try, Super FNAF. And when I booted it up, I could see exactly why you guys wanted me to play it. And then when I played it, I realized, oh, everybody is gonna hate me. So let's talk about Super FNAF, and you better stay out of the comments until I say my piece because it's not all that bad. Then by all means, you can tell me how big of a piece of trash I am later. Super FNAF is a 16-bit style retelling of the days leading up to Freddy and Friends being dismantled by Purple Guy in FNAF 3. Let me first start off by saying this game is beautifully crafted. The presentation of the game is phenomenal with each sprite looking fantastic. It manages to capture the eeriness of the series in a way that also feels like it belongs on my Super Nintendo. The story too is such a strong part of the game. The game tells the story of the five kids that were killed by Purple Guy that go on to possess the animatronics. It's a great take on how it happened and actually names the kids, which took Scott six freaking games to do, and even then, it took MatPat two episodes to solve one of the kids' names. So you might be asking, why am I prepping you guys for hate when it seems like I have nothing but good things to say about the game? Well, after all that being said, the gameplay is a hot mess. Each night you'll be tasked to accomplish certain objectives as the animatronics. You can switch freely between them, but more often than not, you'll just use the animatronic of the night to go look at the security guard. In the end, it falls into simple fetch quests over and over again, which is unfortunate because each character controls differently, which could have led to some great gameplay. All that would have been fine, but then the controls are so clunky. Sure, you have the basics like moving and jumping, and that feels fine, but the main tasks of talking and grabbing items is odd. Rather than a simple confirm button, you have to press down to go through the text, and picking up an item requires you to open your inventory, press down to pick up the item, and then up again to close the inventory. Look, it sounds like I'm complaining about nothing, but when you play it, you feel these things. If these controls were cleaned up, I no doubt would be singing a very different song right now. Well, clean up that and the platforming section that has gravity like it was on Jupiter, and the final scene that requires you to make sure every single pixel is covered before you can finish the game, which took me 15 minutes to figure out that I was missing one spot in room one I thought I had covered, but not really. I mean, tighten up those parts and you'll have a solid game. <sighs> Rant aside, they are working on a Super FNAF 2 that already looks leagues better than what they did here. And if they're watching, I'm sorry if this came out hurtful, but I also hope it is useful feedback for you. Super FNAF has so much potential that I'd love for you guys to really push further. Or you can go to the comments and rip into me. It's a free internet. God knows I couldn't have done what you did, so I guess have at me. And with that great chance to destroy me in the comments, it looks like my FNAF fan games journey has come to an end. Yes, there are tons of games still out there, but unlike Scott, I know when it's a good time to stop. I've played so many of these games that everything just begins to bleed together. There are definitely standout ones out there like Dormitabas, Day Shift at Freddy's, and One Night at Flumpty's, but there has definitely been a few hot messes that I didn't even talk about. But more so, this whole thing has made me respect the fan game community so much more than before. Sure, some are just fun parodies, but others show some real potential for breakout developers that will go on to do some really great work in the future. And speaking of future releases, I hear there's one more game that's still being worked on.
I deserve this. I deserve this for not talking about the game. So yes, let's actually quickly talk about Five Nights in Anime Ultimate Location. It's still an alpha, but already it's shaping up to be better than a lot of the games I've played. If you're expecting just a reskinning of Ultimate Custom Night, but sexy, you'd actually be surprised. There are some really interesting mechanics being built that require you to juggle many different tasks at once. It's still being worked on and there are a few kinks, but the final product is shaping up to be a bit less of a parody and more of its own thing. I mean, with that being said, it still has a lot of boo. Thank you everyone for watching this third and yes, final FNAF fan games video. It's been a wild ride filled with jump scares and me having to explain why Hot Freddy is on my screen to my fiance. A special thanks to Alyssa Be Crazy for helping me shoot this thing and also to Elizabeth Mello and my other patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like a shout out on a video, check out my Patreon or you can snack a channel membership to get access to an exclusive channel on my Discord. Also, if you want more cyber channel goodness, don't forget to check out my Twitch where I'm streaming Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. PST with another Sunday stream in the works that will also be at 3 p.m. PST. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, like the video, all that good stuff that helps you know when I post a new video. And until next time, Cybered out.